Hello and welcome to the presentation video of Carrier Command Gaia Mission. Some people may remember the original from 1988 on which this modern remake is based. In Carrier Command, the core gameplay consists of vehicular combat involving mostly island engagements between two fortress-like carriers striving for control, surmounting to an action game with strategy elements. As you may have noticed, the icons on the bottom of the screen indicate units I have on board the carrier. These are the VTOL capable aircraft and the amphibious all-terrain assault vehicles designated the Manta and the Walrus respectively. All units are controlled remotely from the bridge. The bridge itself may be seen here in the background, reinforcing the fact that you are seated in the captain's chair viewing the battlefield on a translucent display in front of you. Your main objective is to sink the enemy carrier and seize the archipelago consisting of 33 unique islands. Seen here, I am leading an assault on the enemy island of Fulcrum, indicated by the red coloration. Simply put, blue islands are my own, while red belong to the enemy. Zooming in, I am able to make out the geography of the island, enemy encampments and bases, as well as units of the opposition. Prior to an assault, I would equip my units as required, giving them the necessary armament to carry out their mission. I will now arm my Manta with rockets, before sending it into combat. As I mentioned before, you may approach Carrier Command as a tactical real-time strategy, as an action game, or a seamless combination of both. Here, I have deployed my walruses and given them waypoints to an enemy target location, all from the tactical map. Alternatively, I may join the action directly by taking control of a unit myself and heading into battle. Using our convenient radial menu, I may also order my other Mantis to undock and assist my own, all without the need for waypoints. Additionally to first person, Carry Command also features a third person perspective. At any point in the action, I may return control to the onboard computer. Switching between units, direct control or computer control is all done seamlessly. The convenient picture-in-picture -picture preview window in the top right-hand corner of the map allows me to monitor what the unit is doing while attending to other tasks. Should I lose a unit in the heat of battle, it may easily be replaced by producing a new unit in the production screen. Manta three, low ammo. Here I may queue items to be built, which will be available on my stockpile island once complete. Herein lays another strategic element, island setup. An island may be configured to supply materials, produce items, or serve as a defensive stronghold. Although islands are set up to specific types by default, you may adjust them as you see fit adding strategic depth to how you manage your island network. Items from the stockpile may be transferred to the carrier by a submersible supply submarine, or by sailing to the island directly. Once sent, the supply bark will make its way to the carrier in real time. The carrier may also be controlled manually. Whenever you feel combat operations on the current island are complete, 
or you have pressing matters elsewhere, such as defending your own island from an enemy carrier attack, you may choose to set sail. You may perform this manually or you may take advantage of the carrier's onboard navigation system and instruct the carrier to sail to your selected destination. The benefit of this approach is that you make use of the carrier's internal time warp system, compressing time to significantly reduce the length of the trip. Overall, this is Carrier Command's core gameplay experience, present in both of the game's two distinct campaigns. As opposed to random island positions, configurable campaign options and virtually unlimited variability featured in the strategic campaign, Carrier Command's story-driven Gaia mission presents a more firmly defined, progressive gameplay experience, offering a tutorial as well as various special features and missions unique to this campaign. The cutscene currently playing on the screen is the intro sequence to the first section of the Gaia mission campaign. The story revolves around two competing factions striving for dominance, the UEC and the power-hungry APA. In a war that took place some time ago, Earth was left without drinkable water supply and so a solution was sought elsewhere. The Gaia mission was meant to return water from a distant planetary system, restoring Earth to its former glory. Carrier Command Gaia mission is portrayed through the eyes of Lieutenant Mirik, a soldier of the UEC and takes place in the decisive battle between these two factions in the Dead Zone, an archipelago on the planet Taurus. Sir, we crash landed. AA defenses tagged us. Things turn sour, however, when Mirik's drop pod is shot down, leaving his team stranded on the island Vulcan, where our story begins. Let's move out and clear that path. Understood, sir. Ready when you are. Immediately apparent is the fact that the game contains first-person shooter missions, which are in key sections throughout the storyline, where Mirik must leave his vessel to fulfill certain objectives in person, in this case, to get the carrier itself. These missions, while representing only a minor portion of the campaign, make the whole story more personal and close to the chest, as Mirik is not protected by the armored hull of the carrier when on foot. Whoa, bloody hell. Look, girl, let's keep moving. Taking a look at another scenario, we can see here that Mirik must disrupt APA artillery intent on destroying the UEC-owned island's installations. Engaging the enemy head-on seems to work, and the APA artillery quickly decides to abort, retreating from the island. While Mirik would love to finish the job, his colleague advises him of a higher priority target, a part to the Hammerhead nuclear missile system, which is essential later on. Once we arrive at the research center where the part is being stored, Mirik exits the vehicle and makes his way indoors. Armed with an assault rifle and grenade launcher to suit, Mirik quickly dispatches of the remaining enemy units with ease. With adrenaline pumping action, no unit is spared when it comes to blasting through the opposing defenses to take down the fleeing enemy captain, as can be seen here, where Mirik takes control of the heavy weapons while his colleague does the driving. Even Mother Nature makes an appearance through the powerful display of a volcanic eruption. Fiery inferno or heavy rain, the chase continues in any weather conditions. 
But not to spoil too much, let me stop it there and move on to the strategy campaign setup screen, where the various options and settings ultimately result in a highly variable game with virtually unlimited replayability. This is the strategy game setup screen, where you may configure various settings related to difficulty and also set the victory conditions. With this setup, I may be playing for an afternoon, where the enemy has practically no chance of defeating me unless I make a catastrophic mistake. Alternatively, if you're feeling more adventurous, this setup could take the rest of the month to complete, where every decision may lead to victory or defeat. We hope you enjoyed watching the Carrier Command Gaia Mission presentation video. If you're eager to try it now, pre-ordering gives you direct access to the beta. We look forward to your comments and feedback on our Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages.